Now we're going to go over the general approach using everything we have learned up to now and combining it into one master study. And we'll do more in the next section, but for now, I'm going to take this one very slowly for you so that you can understand how you can utilize the spine as an aid to lead your eye through the figure in one nice S curve. So we'll start with the cervical section of the spine. The cervical section ends right here. There is a landmark, a special landmark, I'll just name it, that we see in the back called the 7th cervical vertebra. So that's what we see in the back of the, of the neck. And so it ends right there. Now, to do the gesture while following the spine is that we start with the head. Now, uh, as we move throughout the course, I'll tell you not to start with the head and start with other areas. But for now, this is the basic approach. We start with the head, and I will indicate a wrapping line for the eyes. Or this for the brow. This really is supposed to be for the brow. But I'll put a wrapping line for where the eyes are. Now, I will indicate the point of the neck. Now, this is not the contour of the neck on the woman. But this is how, this is a gesture line. Okay, we're drawing a gesture line of the neck. Now, why do we do that? Why do we not draw a contour and instead do gesture? We're not copying the contour we see on the neck. Well, that's because if we copy the contour of the neck, we lose a lot of emotion because the contour is the finished product. The contour is the finished product, and when you're playing gesture, when you're playing gesture, you go through a lot of different phases. So you go through gesture, you go through tilt and uh, shape, you go through connections, you go through height, width, and depth, you go through perspective, you go through the anatomy, and the anatomy is the consequence of the contour, which the contour is the finished product. Finished product. So, to copy the neck, to copy the contour of the neck would be skipping gesture and going straight to anatomy. And that's a no. You don't want to do that. So, this is a gesture for the neck. And we, after that, lead into the thoracic area. The thoracic area ends right here. And the thoracic area, as we denoted from the earlier lecture, is the oval. It's the, it houses the torso. So as you can see here, uh, this it houses the torso. where neck goes in, and so forth. So this is the torso area. Now the torso from seen from the side would be like that. So there's balance to this. The head would be going this way, the torso another way, and as we move into the lumbar later. But for the torso, the thoracic area, we move through the gesture using repeating curves, okay? So, in the thoracic area, we're using repeating curves. So this, repeating curves. Uh, 
and we're repeating and we're coming up to a point where we will stop and slam into the stomach. So when we slam into the stomach, we see a dominant curve. Now remember, dominant curve. Dominant curve. And dominant curve was the curve we used to see a longer uh, stretch of the body. These lines come through, lead the eye through, and also slamming into the stomach and also the palm of this hand here. So I'm leading beyond the dominant curve and I'm coming to this push of this this, uh, this gripping of this hand here. This will be a force and we haven't we have gone over force just a bit through the compositional studies but here we can see an indication of push. Now what exactly is this hand doing? I'll draw a quick sketch of a crotch here for you. So just real quickly, this is a crotch of a woman and okay their belly button here whatever and see here is the hand here the hand is over her pubic area and it's pushing in see it's pushing and it's creating a force pushing the cloth that we see here here's the cloth and it's pushing up and leading our eye up as we lead up okay that's the gesture of the hand here and that's through the thoracic area now if we get to the lumbar area right here and the lumbar area is ends right here, right before the sacrum. So to get the lumbar area, I will go lead this way, right? And we'll lead into will lead into the the bottom. This creates a asymmetry. If we remember asymmetry like that. Going to the legs and past the sacrum, of course. The sacrum is this. This isn't important that much. The sacrum is right here in, in the in the, um, the the pelvis area. Now we get into the legs, and now the legs would be a nice long S. It would be a nice long. S curve like that. So you can draw a nice long S or you can break it up into line, asymmetrical line, and we end the foot like that. Again, a series of asymmetrical lines leading back to and from. Now, there is, this is because this is the side view, right? And we want to find weight. We want to find the weight-bearing leg. I'm going to introduce to you the weight-bearing leg in this lecture, even though we're not on the weight lecture yet. But you see, both legs are on the floor. But in order to find the weight, we see that, well, this leg is sort of sort of uh, not too firm. So that gives us an indicator that this leg here is has more force than this leg, which is sort of less forceful. And in order to find, make sure you know that this is the correct leg that has the weight-bearing leg, even though it's not as important when seen from the side, is that you look from the back, from the bottom, right here. I'll draw in blue 
this would be a plane, sort of, not really, but a plane. And in order to find the weight, you, you, if you see, uh, I'll draw a bottom here, a crude bottom, whatever. If you see that there is a flesh being pushed right here, and the, and the uh, the other leg you see the bottom just sort of dangling off like that. That's how you know that there's weight on one leg from the back and another on the other side. So from here we sort of see that going on right here, and this not so much, just like here. Okay. So this leg is the weight bearing leg. That's how we know. Weight bearing. Okay. Now to get the limbs, we, oh, of course, to get the limbs, you don't really need to draw the limbs. You might see that you see, oh, okay, I also have to get the hand and the arm in here. But that's not the case. Let me remove this. This is perfect for the side view of the gesture. You don't need to add the arm. That's very unnecessary. From the side view, you don't, don't add the arm. So let me put a note here. Side view, you don't have to add. Don't add limb. Uh, for the general approach. This is for the general approach. Well, only for general approach, so, but only for general, general approach. For regular other gestures, you will add the limb, but for now, you, your goal is to see the flow through the body. Okay, so we did establish that this is the weight-bearing leg. Uh, I forgot to make sure that you can pretty much put a any sort of line here, a uh, dangling line here to indicate the other leg. For the uh, for the other limb though, you will kind of draw that unless there's an exception to this of course if the arm is raised, if you clearly see the arm outside here or in the back here or over here then you will try to pull up your eye from over here and draw the and draw the arm but if the arm is right if the arm is right in here where all of this stuff that you drew it's going to be confusing so but only f so don't add the limb if it is where where you drew your other force lines. Force lines. Okay. To get the other arm, I build off of the lines that I've used from the thoracic area, moving up and through the body like so. And this pushes up. This creates a pushing force up. Okay, so let me look at that again. I built off the thoracic area's lines. I pushed up through. I came around. I pushed up, creating a pushing force that we, that we all know and love. The pushing force. These lines move up with this. And they go over the body like a wave. This blanket goes over the body, slams down like a wave. And to finish this off, you see the other parts of the drapery. It's not the other the drapery is not as important, but it's good exercise to see uh, asymmetry. See, you can denote the drapery as asymmetrical lines.
down here like so. And that's it for this drawing. Okay, that's a lot of stuff. <laughs>